I just read the Wikipedia entry on science um, and I think it might be a good idea for you also to head over to Wikipedia and read this entry on just science and what science is. So what Wikipedia says about science is, uh, is quite interesting. It says that and it's, it's extremely useful uh, definition. So what it says is that science Uh, is a it says it's a systematic enterprise which means firstly that it's an enterprise which which is not something that somebody will do on their own so it's it's a social activity it's an activity which involves more than one people working together it's an enterprise okay so it's an enterprise that builds and organizes okay uh, it builds and organizes knowledge so it's a it's it's what people undertake to build uh, together like you build a building uh, so it, it, it builds knowledge and it also organizes knowledge now organizing knowledge is actually fairly important it's probably as important as building knowledge because if there are these various pieces of knowledge which do not fit with each other then uh, then uh, or for instance if there are two pieces of knowledge which contradict each other then science would have a problem so it's very very important that the knowledge of science is properly organized right now but this is not all that it says about it it says that science is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in forms of now here come the big two big ones and we'll spend considerable time in talking and discussing both of them in form of testable explanations okay it says that the testable explanations and predictions so these are two important things that first is if they are testable explanations second is that they are predictions so when we say testable explanations it essentially means that all knowledge which is created by science should be testable it's it is you should be able to design a test through which you'll be able to test this for instance if you say that sun rises in the east and that is a scientific knowledge so you should be able to get up in the morning and see whether whether the sun rises in the east or not and and keep seeing it every day and so you keep testing it now there's also a problem with that uh, a very minor problem a very interesting problem with you know sun rising in the east as a statement but we'll come to that later on but for the time being let's just stick to that that anything which science explains has to be testable now for instance if you uh, let's say that a particular exercise cures uh, let's say you know knee pain so you will have to try this out on a hundred on on hundreds of people and figure out whether it's really true that this exercise is curing someone's knee pain it should also be able to uh, work with predictions and accurate predictions we saw in the previous video that how uh, how predictions are an important form of scientific knowledge where it will very accurately predict certain things and it may not accurately predict certain things so we have a question mark for example we always know that weather predictions are fairly iffy we are, we are not too sure whether they work properly or not but there are other predictions which are really you know all the time on the money so for example if you say that if you combine hydrogen and oxygen in some proportion where there are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and this will produce 
H2O which is water. So each time you repeat this, each time you will get water. So it always it will predict that if you combine hydrogen and oxygen you get water and this will hold true at all times. So uh, now this is the whole thing that uh, it builds knowledge in forms in forms of testable explanations and predictions. Now both of them are important. So now if you look at you know, knowledge around us and you um, you try applying these two to various statements we will see whether those statements can form part of scientific knowledge or not all right so now let's say that you imagine that this is a good song okay so now if you say that this is a good song and how will you know that this is a good song so you will actually go around and let's say you know collect a bunch of let's say 10 people and play this song to these 10 people and you will ask them whether it's a good song but now you will not be able to predict that all of them will say that it is good because it's not as clear a case as hydrogen and oxygen forming water some but some people might say that the you know the singer is not too good the lyrics are all right you know i think it's a great song no i think it's a lousy song you will have all shades of opinions and there will not be a very clear way to say with that this is either true or it's false because there are a range of opinions between these two ends right so in which case that this is a good song cannot be part of your scientific knowledge or for that matter even that if you call this as this is a bad song somebody might say that's not true and there are opinions and these opinions cannot be predicted these opinions can there is no way of testing whether a song is good or bad so whether the song is good or the song is bad is not something which can form a part of scientific knowledge it's a knowledge that which is nevertheless very important it's it's extremely important for you to have taste to you for you to have an appreciation of music all that's valid but what we are saying it it cannot be a scientific knowledge so as a result we often keep arguing about things which are not of scientific nature or cannot be part of scientific knowledge but we try imagining that it is either way and that's actually a fairly uh, troublesome thing to do all right so here I would again like to press the pause button here and I'd like you people to think about this entire statement and discuss it among ourselves that what are these forms of testable explanations and predictions that science works on and that science that any statement or any knowledge which is not testable and which does not accurately predict cannot be called a scientific knowledge.